run about 400 mother cows. Uh, we've got three different forest service ranges and we're in the process of bringing our animals home from there. Um, and then today we brought all the bulls off range and then today we're, we're moving them home and then they'll go up to their winter pasture where they are fed a mixture of alfalfa and grain hay until we need them next spring. I left home when I was 17 and I by jingles was never gonna go work on a ranch or a farm again. I grew up on a little two by four place in Lake the Oregon where we kept, uh, we had three, three milk cows and enough uh, I think 30 sheep and I don't know, pigs and chickens and your basic farm. I like getting up in the morning and watching the sun come up and I don't know, you hear the cows bawling off in the distance, maybe a dog barking or a coyote or something and it's just, kind of makes you feel, I don't know if I sound hokey, but it makes you feel like you belong to the earth. It just, you're part of it. It's what you do. Yeah, there's lots of days it's can see to can't see, but don't look at how long the day is. You, you take the little pieces of it as it goes along, and you might have 15 minutes where something fun happens and you laugh like crazy, and, and that's what carries you through the, the two hours of the, the grunge and the dirt. That, has to be done too. My husband took over cooking breakfast the second week we were married. I don't know what that said about my breakfast making. Bacon and eggs every day. Uh, once in a while we'll have oatmeal, but we have breakfast. And then I pack, a, I call it a snack lunch. Uh, sometimes I'll barbecue ribs and sometimes it might be fried chicken and part way through the day we'll take a break and everybody there will have uh, something to just kind of keep you going. Sometimes I have a roast in. God bless the man that came up with the crock pot. That's the best best tool in a ranch woman's life. life. Uh, <laughs> than it is about actually striking the animal. You gotta move them and you, and you gotta make a lot of noise in order to get them to go. You can't say please, they just don't move. If you're gonna work on a ranch and, and probably on a large farm too, you don't work there, you you live it. Uh, you can't come to work on a cow ranch and say, oh, I, I work from 7.30 to 4.30. 
because some days you'll work 7.30 to 7.30, some days you'll work 3.30 to 7.30, and there's been times that, you know, it's midnight before you actually get in the house, so you can't say how many hours you're going to work, and you, you can't keep track of that. You just need to get the job done, and when the job's done, you're done, and someday you're done at, at 7, and some days you might be done at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We also, in the summertime, when you're up on the forest allotments, uh, we go up at least once a week and sometimes more to check on our cows. Um, sometimes we do it horseback, sometimes we do it in a pickup. Uh, once in a while we can do it on an ATV, but you just go up and you check the salt and you check your fences and gates and you know, grass. And if it looks like you're getting a little shy of grass, then you gather some up. And take them to where they can get some better grass. We sell feeders on a video auction and this year uh, they all happen to be staying in the state of Washington. Um, and you know we, we've had them go as far away as, as Colorado uh, but we kind of like it when they stay in state because it is less stress on them. They you know we load them and, and they're only on the truck you know, five or six hours, and then they're off and back on feed and water. It's not a bad place to spend the winter. Our bulls um, have a breeder's mark on one side, and that number tells us their pedigree, and we can go back to our records. And, and get the pedigree. And I can go back, any cow we've got, I could go back to her great, great, great grandma and tell you who her mom was and who her dad was. Anyway, and then after we get them, we put what we call a ranch brand on them. They're hot iron brand with the actual brand. And then we also put an identification brand on them uh, so that we can keep track. Our heifer bulls, and a heifer bull being one that you use to breed heifers, because he throws a light birth weight calf, and so he's called a heifer bull. So we brand them with the ranch brand number on the hip, hip heifer, and then we brand our cow bulls, which throws a bigger calf, on the shoulder. Then I don't have to carry my books with me all the time to say, oh, is that a heifer bull or is that a cow bull? And like, then what we do, it's got a, got a brand on the hip, that's a heifer bull, he goes this way, cow bull goes that way. These bulls weigh between 1,800 and 2,200 pounds. moving today are between two and probably five years old. We only keep a bull for three to four breeding seasons. Plus they keep growing. Uh, they get huge and our cows can't handle them. They're just too big. And they, they get so heavy they can't do the job anymore. Mm -hmm. 